People that play Affinity more than me, can I keep this? I'm on the play. Can I keep this on the play? I think I want to keep this. Steel Overseer is just a really good card. No, I can't. Everybody's saying no. All right. All right. I'm gonna keep this one. There's no there's no way the average five is better than this. Just zero percent. I'm a, I'm a pretty firm believer in you'll never lose a game if you mul for mulliganing to five if you always keep seven. The mirror 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 on the wall. Who is the greatest affinity player of them all? Certainly not I. Is this really that much better? I feel like this hand doesn't do anything. Karn's probably not very good in the mirror. How bad do we want to win the Affinity Mirror? I have two grudges in the board. I have two grudges and two grids. Well, I have way more artifacts than they do, so I'm going to go ahead and smash with this Ravager. All right, is Ink Moth lethal next turn? Activate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's not to affinity and beyond. Uh, I think I only have I only have seven right now, right? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, and then an extra one is seven. So that's eight total. Yeah, but so so the thing about that is crazy ship. If I if I'm trying to set up a big ink moth last turn, they would have left their ink moths up this turn. I counted that chat. I counted. I I know how ravager math works. Yeah, you can only count one ravager twice. So this is now one two. Three, four, five, six, seven. So I can put seven total counters on my Ink Moth Nexus. Ah, ah, ah. So I can I can attack for eight Infect this turn. Fun fact, I top 16 to Classic with this deck. So now we can hit them for nine. Now we can hit them for nine. But that's still nine is not 10, is not lethal. Yeah, yeah, we hit them for a poison, we attack with all the stuff, and then like, if they leave their defenses down next turn, we kill them. Which is fine. And like, we're pretty insulated from dying on the backswing here, especially with the Ornithopter up to block. Affinity is one of those decks where learning what plays are right to make on board is are, are things you can learn a lot having just played against the deck because the Affinity deck is all on board math. There's no, there's no cards I'm playing out of my hand. All of this Ravager math is like heads up on the board here, basically. Uh, 
Um, do I want to deal extra damage this turn? I don't think so. Yeah, I probably have at least one extra land. Let's do that. We have two grids in the board. There's a deck list on your screen. If you're on mobile, you can type exclamation point deck list in chat and get a deck list that way. Peace, Greek at you. Have a good evening. Chirp. So they have to Vault Scourge block my Ink Moth this turn. Huh. They're dead on board. They are dead on board, right? I don't need to play this, right? Because I have two three four five six seven eight counters to put on things so they're dead no matter how we slice this oh wait no chat that's wrong right That's wrong, right? Yeah, eight counters is only nine. Lifelink doesn't matter because I can sack. I can sack the thing they block. I think. I think I was supposed to play this. Maybe. Let's just see how they block, and we'll count from there. I believe, if I'm counting correctly, we're short a point of damage, though. Yeah, because they're at 10. I can only deal 9. But depending on how they block, this could work out well for us. Got him. I attacked with everything because 12 people in chat said it was fucking lethal. That's that's why I attacked with everything. And I I trusted I didn't I didn't count for myself, and by the time I had counted for myself, I realized it wasn't actually lethal. Yes, I believe this is exactly what the kids refer to as chat lethal. That is exactly correct. I, pa I paused. Lots of people sounded very sure of themselves. Then by the time I hit attack with everything, I was like, nope, that is nine points of damage. It is not ten. So I definitely should have probably, I probably should have just played the cranial plating out. I 
Am I dead on the backswing to Inkball Nexus is? I think I am actually. I'm pretty sure I'm dead to these Inkball Nexus. <coughs> oh, they can animate, equip, animate, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're just, we're just dead. They have to count, I guess. If I would have left this up, we wouldn't be dead. They technically have to play around Galvanic Blast, I guess. Yeah, sure, I get why they were wrong, Pokemon nerd. I just they were wrong. And I didn't and I trusted. And I should have I should have counted for myself. Nah, they're just counting up really quick. Yeah, they found the line. The mistake, the mistake was mine to make. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have listened to the way that people were counting. They're dead, they found the line. All right, so these cards sound great. Edge Champion's bad. Karn's probably slow. What's the last cut? The people that were saying, why didn't you block? The answer is because I didn't count. Just like the people in chat either didn't count or couldn't count. They, they literally just made the line and attacked. So I think Mem Knight's the cut for the last one. Pretty sure it sounds right. He's like, he's like the go-to get out of my deck card. Should I bring in Whip Flare? They have a lot of little creatures. What do you think Whip Flare seems good against another creature deck? Gotta use your words, kid. Signal Pest is not good because... This hand's got Grudge and two Blasts, so I'm gonna keep it. Bring in Rest in Peace to hose the Ravagers, right? It's funny, so I remember I I top 16 a modern classic with this deck one time, and the the two matches I lost were um, in the mirror, my opponent had four grudges in their board and they slaughtered me, and then against a company deck in game three on the play, they went turn one forge tender, turn two Kataki, and I was just dead. Good news, we can kill this through their jar. Zero mana artifact, one mana artifact. At least I can still kill this. Hopefully they don't have another payoff. like master of ethereum here and kill me maybe i should have left that in my deck it's very possible that i should have left that in my deck is this card this card does still beat down right it generates that's why it's good it generates card advantage but it also beats down Yeah, whenever, whenever I play a deck like this that's just, like, one of the better decks in Modern, it always just, like, reaffirms my understanding of the fact that, like, why Modern is so diverse. Because, like, this deck just really isn't that much better than most of the bullshit people play in this format. I'm like, a lot of the bullshit decks are really sweet. 
Second opal would be the nuts. Yeah, the Harden scale deck looks sweet. Bob said he was winning a lot of games with it. Does does something objectively powerful as strong linear draws. Well, I mean, the sand isn't good. Hopefully this is a matchup where Edge Champion is good. I'm just not playing another mirror. I can't remember the last time we played against Affinity. I can't remember the last time we played against Affinity. <sighs> Moving on up. Do -do -do -do. Where are all the Tron decks? Where are they at? We've lost the Affinity Mirror twice now. We've lost the Affinity Mirror twice now. It's a brutal morning. Karin has been exceptional in our opponent's decks. You're not wrong. I'm not a major in anything. I have a degree. I have multiple degrees. Making sure we can get to five decks, five and six today. <laughs> uh... When you said you were streaming Affinity, this is what you're definitely, right? It's gonna be five, five Affinity. Watch it re us back into the same person. Turn one, turn two, turn three. I think it's pretty good. The player opposite of Karn has scooped 100%. That's, that's definitely true. All right. If this is a third mirror, I'm going to play it out. If this is a third mirror, I'm going to play it out. This deck has a lot of mana in it. We don't have a ton of actual lands, but like as far as like mana producing things go, we have a lot of mana producing things. That was a great draw. So Steel Overseer kind of puts counters on Karn. Karn's gonna make a token and then Steel Overseer's gonna put a counter on the token. It's annoying, but not the end of the world. It's like some kind of mid-range value deck. Does this guy have a gun? He's carrying like a, is he carrying a bomb? What is he, what has he got in his hands? Your deck is about to be way too fair for what's going to happen to you opponent.
It's a bomb to make a total carnage. This, that was pretty good. Just like, down tick, down tick. Like, that's a lot of power. Like, that's like a busted modern level of power, right? Like the amount, and like the fact that this card can like grind against control too, in addition to doing what he just did. Like, that's pretty great. Uh, we didn't, we played Squee and Dredge last night. You can catch it on YouTube. Archive is up there now. We played Full League with it. Yeah, but I mean, like, w I think we'd be winning this game without Steel Overseer. I think even without a Steel Overseer, we'd be ahead here. Kinda, I mean, this would be beating through these Lingering Souls, right? I guess they'd get to pressure my Karn, kinda? I haven't done the math here, chat, but I'm also not the one who has to block, so I feel like I'm in no way obligated to do the math. So, figure it out. Hey, 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 math is for blockers. Cheesy Pie Gaming, thank you very much for the five month resubscription. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. That was. That was lethal, apparently, you know, the more, the more, you know. You can, Stinger, you can. Thanks for being around for an entire year. Grids and whip flares, Karns, Etch Champions, Memnite out. A signal pest is the cut against Lingering Souls decks, right? Maybe turn Master of Ethereum just to keep my curve a little bit lower. These are technically a one drop. Leave a Memnite in maybe. I don't think I want to Blood Moon them. <laughs> I offer myself as tribute. <laughs> uh... Yeah, but like we're boarding in Whip Flare and Gear Appear Aether Grid, right? Hey, can I trim Galvanic Blast? That card seems a little medium. I think I like this. What do we think of this? I traded two. I'm only going up two colored spells total, right? Because I'm boarding out two and boarding in four. I think this is okay. Let's give, let's give this a try. We have Karn in the opener. How can we lose, chat? This is actually really good, right? We get to go 
This, 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 this. Wait, I can turn one cranial plating, right? One, it's free, free. Yeah, I can turn one cranial plating here. Are we, are we setting up to turn to Karn? This is totally a turn two card, right? This card is sweet. Your move, Yugi boy. This is all I got. This is, this is everything I have. Do your best. Oh no! Oh no, chat! We told them to do their worst and then they did their worst. Oh no. Oh no. All right, all right. Take two, let's go, let's try again. Let's try again. The pride cometh before the fall, chat. The pride cometh before the fall. That, uh, that's all she wrote. Are sideboard cards good in this format? What do we think? How do we, how do we feel about sideboard cards in this format? They seem pretty good. This hand just doesn't do anything. I guess it just needs a land, right? There is zero salt about Stony Silence when you're playing a deck like this. If you're gonna play Affinity, or you're gonna play Dredge, or you're gonna play any of the powerful linear decks in Modern that just lose to a single sideboard card, you just gotta be okay with that. If you can't shrug and go, well, we died to Stony Silence, you just really can't play this deck. You just, you really, you just can't. It's not, it's not gonna be a good deck for you. Just gotta, just gotta accept that sometimes they want it more than you. And that's okay. That's okay. They want it more and you can just move on with your life. Kinda. Karn helps against Stony if you don't have three of your four mana sources as artifacts. So yes, Karn could have won that game, but the fact that I had three artifact mana sources in play meant we were pretty unlikely. Like, it, it, had we been on the play that game and we had Karn in play already, I definitely would have played it out. But the position we were in, that just wasn't happening. If you don't feel like losing to sideboard cards, you should play something like Jeskai or or Green Black Rock. Just good, good, reasonable mid-range decks that are just like collections of good cards that don't get hosed by single cards. Yeah, just something. I felt like we were pretty pretty unlikely to win from there. Huh. They can start townshipping next turn. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this. They can start townshipping next turn. They get to flash this back, but I think this is worth cleaning it out. Two color decks in general can lose to Blood Moon. But you're much less bad against, especially Jeskai Nahiri, where you have four main deck copies of Nahiri to exile Blood Moon. You care about Blood Moon a whole lot less. This is definitely just get Steel Overseer into play, right? Is it collected? Are they a collected company deck? I'm not gonna attack. This is like Restoration Angel, right? I'm just holding removal up. I talk myself out of it. 
It felt weird to me that they didn't flashback souls. The problem with waiting to get the backside of souls, Una, is that there's a non-zero chance my opponent just like doesn't flash them back and just activates Gavany Township the following turn, and then I'm just like up a creek without a paddle. So we'll leaf liege. No, I don't think Spite Smiter strictly means company. They, they're a lingering souls deck and they have spot removal, so it might not be. I think this is a Wilt Leaf Liege. Yeah, I, I believe we're dead. I believe we're dead. We were going to turn two Karn and then we got Stony Silenced. Oh, we did. We did put Karn Art game one, game one of this match, right? Forgot about that. I think we're too far behind at this point, probably. It's feeling like we're too far behind at this point. Probably a good line, just like hope they don't have removal. This line is better against removal, but if they have removal, maybe we're just dead anyways. <laughs> yep. Is in fact a battle cattle chat. All right, so this Wilt Leaf Liege can get up to a 5 5, which means I want my Vault Scourge to be a 6 6. One, two, three, four, five. So I think we're going to go. We're gonna go all in here. So we're gonna go ahead and put this here. And then I'm gonna put this here. And then we're going to animate this Blink Moth Nexus. And we're gonna sack and put five counters on here and then put five on the Vault Scourge. We're just not beating removal. But if they have a removal spell, we're dead. This is our line to win the game though. We have a few different lines that let us lose slowly, but this line could potentially win us the game. Like building a 6-6 six, six lifelinker that's going to get bigger is pretty good. No, I want to start activating the Steel Overseer. This lets me activate the Steel Overseer, and we're dead. Good game's opponent. Well, hopefully, the next match is going to go a little bit better than these last few. Welcome, 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 everyone. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time TCG player and content producer here on Twitch. We play Magic 30-plus hours a week here on this channel. We play a ton of Modern. We play some Legacy. We might dip our toes into Standard and Brawl. I haven't quite decided yet. At any rate, if you are enjoying my content, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are what keep me here doing this full time. If you're one of the many people in the world that has Amazon Prime, if you link your Amazon account to your Twitch account, that gets you Twitch Prime included for free in there. And Twitch Prime gives you a free channel subscription to a channel of your choice every single month. You also... And support my stuff by supporting my sponsors. MTGOTraders.com would love to buy and sell Magic Online cards with you. And if you use code Hoagland PayPal at checkout with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there. CoolStuffInc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code Jeff5, you can save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. 
And finally, Mac Weldon provides premium men's clothing using code Jeff Hoagland at bit.ly forward slash Hoogle Clothes. You can save 20% on your first order there. They do high quality casual wear, t-shirts, shorts, pants, underwear, polos, all that sort of stuff. Jawa Jack, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. I really appreciate that. I know there's a lot of excellent people streaming on Twitch right now, so I appreciate you putting your Twitch Prime towards my channel this month. This list, like most of the lists we play here, are donation deck lists. So if you're interested in finding out how I could play your list on stream, be sure to check out bit.ly forward slash Google sellout. It has all the details on uh, how to get your deck into the queue to get played on stream. And there's Full Metal Adept with the 11 month free subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome back. I appreciate the continued support. All right, we're having a little bit of a bad run with Affinity. We're gonna, we're gonna give it another shake here, play at least one more match. How did the four color pyro league go? It went really well, actually. I think we finished four and one. Four and one sounds right. At any rate, uh, that league, like most of my leagues, will end up on my YouTube channel after the fact. This hand doesn't really have a payoff, but it's got signal pest and it's got some creature lands and it's got a galvanic blast, so I think this is fine. We get to do this into this into this into this. How much democracy does a tier three sub count for? So a tier three sub can either add a new deck list into the donation queue with 15 bonus points, or it can add 25 points to an existing deck list in the queue. And tier two subs add can add 10 points to a deck of their choice in the queue to move something up. Seriously? Is this, is this a third different one or is this someone we played already today? Just like, for fuck's sake, what are, what are the odds of like, just like 12 affinity mirrors in a row? What are, what are the odds? This is our fourth league today and we haven't played affinity at all, like against affinity. And now that we're playing it, this is our third mirror match. Our hands real good. So I guess we'll try. I guess we'll try. Smack you. Yeah, I agree, Extras. I think, I think this deck's okay. I think there's a lot of decks that just like line up well against it. And, and it's a deck that like Dredge just loses to a lot of sideboard cards. All right, um, yeah, I'm just gonna do this. Then I'm gonna fire up a Blink Moth here. I'm gonna smack them in the air. I'm gonna go ahead and animate with this one so that way if anyone wanna chump block with the Memnite, I can. Animating this Blink Moth next this gives me an extra point on my cranial plating here. Go. Kind of qual. I feel like Affinity is a very good deck for beating people who are bad at magic. And which, to be fair, a lot of people are bad at magic. But the thing about Affinity is that because everything it does relies on onboard tricks, a good magic player that's playing a good deck that has the tools to keep up with this deck is going to beat it a lot of the time. Maybe I was supposed to leave this spire up so that way I could move cranial plating at instant speed there. Uh, usually decks in the queue that don't have a deck list with them means that it's a deck that I've played in the past and someone has requested that I, I update the deck or build the deck. Hey, Ben Knight, it's whatever. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring Karnan in the mirror this time. 
Get some carnage going on. What are the cuts here now? What are the cuts? What do we think? What am I what am I trimming? Is signal past the cut? What about this? I guess Memnite's good at fueling. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. Let's do it. I guess Master's kinda slow. I want a coward split and just go 2 1. I just don't want to cut too many cheap artifacts. All right, after this match, we're gonna, we're done playing Affinity Mirrors after this match. I don't, I don't know if I can play a fifth match win or lose after this and just play another, a fourth mirror in this league. We're gonna play some Bant Control after this. Got a really, really sweet Bant Control list in the queue. Powerful linear deck, good at beating up on tier three decks. Like most of the good decks in Modern are good against random jank because they're just powerful linear decks. So I feel like I feel like Affinity doesn't really better than beating random decks than say Grishel Brand or stuff like that. I mean, to be fair, the league can't possibly go worse than this one, right? When the sideboarding segment lasts longer than the game. Because this is an aggressive deck, it's not a disruptive deck. And like, Disciple of the Vault is a card in general that's only good when you have Arcbound Ravager out. And if you have Arcbound Ravager out, you don't need another card to make Arcbound Ravager better, generally speaking. So basically, um, it's a win more card. It's a card that's good when you're already winning. We're playing Bant Control next. I don't actually think Engineered Plague would even be that good against humans. The the creatures in humans get very big very quickly, and Engineered Plague's three mana. All right, we're dead. God bless. Aether Grid. Aether Grid. Aether Grid. Aether Grid. Aether Grid. Aether Grid. Ancient Grudge. Aether Grid. All right, maybe, maybe Zikan Father can pull us out of this hole. The Steel Overseer is going to put us in here a little bit. Get a few draws at removal. Second Overseer, yep. I think that's better for us than a Ravager. I don't know. We need to find Grudge pretty quickly, right? No blocks at this point. Garn, 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 garn. Garn, 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 garn. Cranial planning ornithopter. We got an ornithopter, boys and girls. Yeah, I was kind of expecting it like spell pierce here. Maybe they have a galvanic blast they're holding up as opposed to activating the blink moth. Because I didn't want Galf Blast. I wanted something greedier than that. Wanted, wanted one of my good cards. 
Yeah, I'm gonna take one more draw step here at uh, an ancient grudge, but we are pretty dead. Oh no! Don't kill McCarnerson. He's just a poor, poor innocent silver golem trying to get by in the world. All right. This mirror has a lot of play to it. It's very interesting. Has a lot of back and forth. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. This is, this is MTGO's way. This is MTGO's way of telling me I should have just conceded after starting 03. I think this hand is fine. Play Shatter Storm since we keep running into the mirror. That's a very reasonable solution. I agree with that one. Seems decent. What if they what if they play Stony Silence? We just couldn't win the game anymore. Must be a travesty. My sequencing here is technically bad, but like before someone says anything, they're not gonna galvanic blast my signal pest on this board. That's a very bad play. I technically didn't give them the chance to make the mistake, but a reasonable player there is just gonna take one from the signal pest and then we would blast the seal over here post combat. So I just wanted to get my auto pass value. Grid, grudge, grid, grudge, grid, grudge. All right, all right, so we're overseeing everything here. Vandal Blast just seems so much worse than Ancient Grudge. We're particularly bad at drawing our interaction, huh? God, that's a beating. I guess at least they don't have anything else going on. Someone was watching the stream the other day and they said they were playing Big Tron and they had Eldrazi Tron board in Damping Sphere against them. Just like the biggest what the fuck moment. It's like, what? You boarded in what? That's pretty good for them. I guess we both have Overseers going. I'm gonna go ahead and pass for now. The onboard mask gonna get real big real fast here, especially once I add a Ravager into the mix. It's a lot of life gain. I would bring in Damping Sphere against Eldrazi Tron, I think. I think that's probably fine. I'm just gonna take this hit here. Especially with this Ravager next turn. cigarette after that one chat and I need a fucking smoke just get that out of there did I miss lethal Fuck, did I miss lethal I didn't count if I had lethal chat I didn't count if I had lethal was this lethal activate three four five six seven 15 no i only i only had 16 Whew. only only had 16 
They were pretty close to lethal there, though. It was pretty close to lethal. So this becomes a 3-3, three, three, this becomes a 3-4, so smash you. I don't know why they blocked here. That seems really bad. And you just want to jump block the one that's going to deal you more damage. But you're losing your guy anyways. And not killing mine. That's probably just a mistake. Maybe they didn't realize they had a steal over zero activation as well. Master of their own. Sweet. And they have zero cards. They should just be dead to Ink Moth. Plus Ravager here. Uh, Splinter Twin got banned. And Infect fell off a cliff. Is the, the two things that happened there. So, attack with these, get my battle cry trigger. It says two counters, so I need to put two more counters on it. It was a combination of the Gataxian Probe ban and Fatal Push and Collective Brutality. There were, there was a, they finished at 12 and 12 poison. How perfect. All right. We went one and one in the affinity mirror. And then, yeah, what a short, what a short brutal run. Yeah, let's, let's play the last one. I feel bad. Someone put affinity in the queue and someone else voted it up. I don't want to cut them short. We skipped one of the matches earlier. Let's, let's play the fifth one out. I wait for it to pop. Check out the sweet peeps that make the stream happen. Inked Gaming, they do custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags. Jeff12 will save you 12% on your purchases there. Card Sphere will help you turn your magic cards into other magic cards or cash directly with other players. There's no haggling, they just take a 1% fee off the top. And of course, the three guys with the big heads on the banner. Anironix, Justin, Nivik, all y'all watching. Thanks everyone for just being here. Without, without an audience, I wouldn't have any reason to do this, so I appreciate it. Doing this full time is kind of weird. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to be here uh, between 10 and 5, four days a week. And then on the fifth day, I'm going to be here between 10 and 1. And then I'm going to be back again in the evening. So that way, this, this is a low energy shell. Look, I've played the Affinity Mirror three times in the last hour. I'm where I'm getting worn out, okay? You think Dark Depths and Zone Forge Mystic can be unbanned in Modern? I think putting more degenerate stuff into Modern does not sound good. I think Stone Forge Mystic is laughable that it's banned. That card should definitely be legal. We skipped the second Affinity Mirror. We lost an Affinity Mirror to punting on board math, and then we queued into it again. I was like, fuck this, I'm not playing it again. And then we just found a third one in this league. So, fingers crossed, this is hopefully not a fourth Affinity Mirror. This hand is great. Very reasonable hand. Yeah, I most of I think all of the cards that are slow and fair should come off the modern ban list. Cards cards that I think are slow and fair for reference. Birthing Pod, Green Sun Zenith, uh, Dig Through Time. Stoneforge Mystic. These are all cards that could and should be legal, I think.
So, t Twin's not a strictly fair card, but I would unban Twin. Twin, Twin's not a fair card, but I, I agree that Twin is slow compared to some of the degenerate things that go on in Modern. For those that don't remember history, the, de the Birthing Pod deck that people felt was the better Birthing Pod deck in the format, at least, you know, players like Brian Brunduin, people that, like, played a lot of Pod, was potting into fucking A. Are you kidding me? This was a joke, Magic. When I... Look, I know I said I was going to give them a fifth. This is... Is this a different username? This is a fourth different affinity player i just can't do it i know we won the last one but i'm just look i want this modern format it's got so much variety in it it's great you can you can play lots of decks and play against lots of different decks that's it i quit i'm done let's play some band control let's play let's play some band control good lord oh i think that's the first time and and i play a lot of modern leagues like like, probably more of a rekindled soul with the salty bits. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. All right. There's going to be no affinity mirrors in this next league chat. I don't know what the opposite of a buckle up emote is, but this deck certainly warrants it. The classic Terminus, Sphinx's Revelation, Emrakul, The Promised End. Just, this is. Let's say I need a palate cleanser, and this is definitely a palate cleanser. End the argument. People were potting birth people were potting into siege rhinos. They weren't potting into combos. So the best pod decks were fair decks. This deck looks sweet. I'm pretty so this is a donation deck list.